Hello traders, Steve Gans here and I wanted to share with you the answer to a question that I get on a regular basis. And that question is, aside from my income trading where I'm trading butterflies and earnings reports and things like that, what do I do option-wise in a long-term investment account? And I'll tell you, one of the strategies that I find by far to be one of the most appealing for a long-term buy-and-hold account, an IRA, something along those lines, a strategy that has zero downside risk to it, but that can add 5, 10, 15, 30% returns to an account is something called the wheel strategy. Now I'm going to walk you through a simple version of the wheel strategy. I'm going to do this in two separate parts. Part one is going to be the entry side of the wheel and how I buy stock I want to own for a cheaper price than what it's currently trading for. And then I'm going to walk through the, the sale side of the wheel and that's how I get more money for that stock than what it might currently be trading at. And this is one of the simplest, if you will, options trades out there. A lot of people that enter the world of options trading, they start with this specific trade because it is so simple, can be done in IRAs, etc. So I'm going to walk you through this with a diagram, and then I'm going to show you an example in that diagram. Then I'm going to use option strat to further illustrate exactly what's happening with the wheel strategy. So the first thing is, what is a wheel strategy? It's an option strategy that involves both selling cash secured puts and covered calls in a specific sequential order, which I'll go through with you. It's designed to generate income by capitalizing on option premium, selling premium, and potentially profiting from a stable or slightly increasing stock price. And we'll talk about what are the dynamics of a stock that I want to do this on here in a moment as well. So why would a trader or investor trade the wheel strategy? What is the value that this thing brings to the table? The first thing is it's a really great cash flow generator. I know many people that use this particular strategy in a retirement account to help generate additional income out of stock they already own. And again, if you already own stock, I want to stress this because this is a crazy aspect of this trade, there is zero downside risk in trading this strategy, uh, particularly given you already own stock or you already have an intent to own stock in 100 share increments. And we'll see why that is in a moment. So the reason that this is so valuable, and it has no downside risk, is it actually lowers the cost basis in stock that you already own or are going to own. And again, we'll see how that happens here in a second. Zero downside risk in this trade, and it allows you to generate income from non-dividend stocks. Now I have quite a few stocks in my portfolio, things like Google, NVIDIA, Amazon, although I think Amazon just started uh, with a dividend, but a lot of stocks that essentially have no dividend to them. And this is a way that I can generate income off of those stocks that's not really a dividend, but I, I, I call it renting out your stock. It's not truly that, but you'll see what I mean here in part two. So right now, I'm going to deal with part one. This is a step-by-step -step entry process. So the first step in part one is identifying a stock you want to own. And again, anytime we're dealing with options here, an options contract represents 100 shares of a stock. So this needs to be a stock that you are able to purchase 100 shares of. So that's a starting point. Aside from that, there's a host of additional criteria that I personally look for. Things such as making sure it's highly liquid, that there are tight bid ask spreads on both the stock and the options that trade around it. I want something that I am prepared to hold on to for quite some time because I'm making a commitment to this, just like a stock that I would purchase in an IRA. I'm making a longer term trade here where I need to understand the fundamentals of this company and I need to be prepared to hold it through some up and down markets. So again, once I identify a stock that I would like to own, then the next step is right now I own none of it, but it's something that I want to own. 
I go and I start selling puts to get into that stock. And after I go through this page, I'll show you some examples where I apply some dollars to this. So right now, I'm just going to walk through the overall diagram real quick. So we sell puts if at the end of the expiration of that options contract, if it expires above that put price, meaning that did not get put to me, but I took in premium. I Keep in mind, I took in money here. And if the stock closed above that price that I sold my put, I just simply repeat the process. And in some cases, if there's a stock I want to own and I'm doing this, let's say, on a monthly basis, I could go through this cycle two, three, four, five, six times or more in some cases before I ever even own the stock. I just keep selling puts. And every time I do that, I am basically bringing in income into this account until such point that stock does finally get put to me. So that's a second scenario that can happen. I sell this put and the stock goes down below the strike price I sold that put at, at which point I get assigned the stock. Now keep in mind, this was my goal. I wanted to own this stock. And I'll apply dollars to this in just a moment to help explain this. But so now I get assigned the stock. So after I'm assigned the stock, now what do I do? I look at that stock, I decide a price that I would be willing to part with that stock, that I'd be willing to sell that stock. And I go out and I sell calls on the stock. So now I sell a call where I'm willing to sell that stock above a certain price and it doesn't get there. It expires below that particular price. Okay, what happens in that scenario? Nothing. I go out and I sell a call again for the following month or the following week or the following quarter, depending on how active I want to be in this process. And again, I could go through this process two, three, four times or more before that stock finally actually gets called away from me. And each time I go through this cycle, I am picking up money that is lowering my overall cost basis in owning this stock. This is allowing me to essentially sell it for higher than I might normally sell it for. So as a quick recap before we continue here, I'm getting into this by selling puts and then once I get the stock put to me, I might do this three, four times. Let's just say I'm getting $2 a month every time I do this. Now, $2 is times 100 because, again, that's per share. So I'm picking up $200 in the next month, $200 in the next month, $200. And then finally, the stock gets put to me. Now I'm going to go out and I'm going to sell calls at a point I'm willing to sell this stock. And I'm picking up. Maybe it's another two bucks, so $200. And then four, five, six weeks later, or four, five, six months later, depending again on the cycle I'm using here, that might get called away from me at that point. I might finally end up where it expires above my strike price, in which case the stock will get called away from me. I won't own it anymore. And what do I do? I go back and I start the process over. Now, I may start this process over in the same stock if I still hold the same opinion of it. The strikes, of course, will possibly be different because the stock may have moved up or down during this series of cycles. But I may start it in the same stock or maybe I go to a different stock at that point. But that's how the wheel operates at a high level. Now, let me walk you through a, a kind of looking at the stock itself. So if we're looking at XYZ stock, and I'm just going to use an example that it's trading at $50. The first step I do here is I come and I sell this put, and I sell it a little bit below the money and exactly the price I sell that at. Different people have different ways of figuring that out, and I get into that on a per stock basis from time to time. But at the end of the day, I'm just going to use $49. So the stock's trading at 50. I sell a put at $49. I sell that for a dollar. So that's a hundred dollars because that's a dollar per share. I go through that three different cycles. In this case, for a dollar share, maybe it's a weekly cycle. So at the end of three weeks, I have picked up 
$300 and I've never been put the stock. I don't own the stock yet. Then finally the stock drops and it drops to $48.50. So I do get assigned at $49 where I sold that put. However, look at this. My cost basis in this is $46. I had to buy the stock at $49, but I took in $300 here before it was ever assigned to me, or $3 per share. So while I had to pay $49 per share at the end of the day, my cost basis was actually $46 because of the fact that I took in that $300 while I was going through this process. So to show you what that looks like in option strat, if I were to, let's just take PayPal for example. And PayPal is currently trading here at, let's see, about 68 and change. So if I go to sell a 67 put, I usually go about a month out. So today is May 1st, or excuse me, April 30th. So I'll usually go out, I might go out to like the June expiration here. Let me refresh my screen. So I'll go out to the June expiration. Again, we're currently trading here at $68.12. And I'll decide a point at which I want to sell an option. And maybe it's the 65 here that I want to sell. So I'm gonna sell this 65 put in this case, I don't own any PayPal right now. I'm going to sell this 65 put and I'm going to bring in $1.73 or $173 to do this. This is what my payoff diagram looks like. And what I want you to note is that even though I'm going to have to pay $65 for this stock, if the stock falls below 65, let me just carry this out to expiration here. My break even is all the way out here at $63.32. So it also shows me that right here. So the stock, even though I have to buy it at 65, I am still profitable even if I have to pay all the way down here to 63.31. Okay, so I might do this process the first week or the first month, maybe I sell a 65 put. Then maybe next week or next month, PayPal works its way up to 72. Then I might sell my put at 70 next month. So again, I can just keep cycling through this and selling puts each time and picking up this additional premium, whatever amount that is. And then when it finally gets put to me, the combination of all these different premiums that I've picked up before the stock gets assigned to me lower my cost basis. So that essentially covers part one, which is selling of the put to get into the trade. So I'm going to break this off here and then I'm going to pick up in a part two. Now that you understand the wheel process, let's start wheeling. Those of you that are interested in understanding this process, watching me go through this process, I'm putting a link down below where you can go and sign up for a more detailed uh, look at the wheel strategy. And also you can join sjgtrades.com. I have a community where I trade a bunch of different trades, but the wheel is one of the trades that I trade in that community. Now this is a paid community. It's a limited group of people that understand or are wanting to learn this process. You have open line of communication with me to ask questions during the process. I produce a small video, usually anywhere from three to 10 minutes, showing the entry process, exactly how I'm gonna enter, why I'm going to enter, and then nothing's gonna happen for a period of time until I either sell another put or the stock gets assigned to me, at which point I will start showing the process of the divestiture or the selling off of that by using covered calls. If you're interested in seeing how I do this, go to sjgtrades.com community and sign up and we'll see you in the room. Thanks so much, everyone. Take care.